Good morning, everyone. This is Colette Marie Stephan, and you are listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. We um, are going to be taking callers. We already have some today. Um, but first, I want to introduce um, what the show is about and also um, my wonderful guest that I'm very excited to have on the show. Um, we will be taking callers, as I said, 1-800-930-2819. And today, what we are talking about is chakra empowerment for women. And so this is about working with your energy body to heal, awaken, and manifest. Yay, manifestation. <laughs> so learn ways to access and activate the individual energies available through your chakras when you need them in your daily life. Uh, understand your feminine energy body and how women's and men's energy um, cycles differ so that you can use your chakras to maximize your vitality and focus uh, on, excuse me, I've got a co-host here, Stella, <laughs> who wants her presence known. Yes, Stella is co-hosting the show with me. <laughs> Sit down now and be good. <laughs> So we want to manifest, maximize your vitality to focus in and incorporate self-healing, including um, that from trauma, so that you, you are able to move forward rather than being trapped by your past. I just love this. So Lisa Erickson is a chakra-based energy worker specializing in women's uh, uh, energetic and sexual trauma healing. She is the author of Chakra Empowerment for Women, Self-Guide Techniques for Healing Trauma, Owning Your Power, and Finding Overall Wellness. She is a certi certified in mindfulness meditation, instruction, and trauma sensitivity, and offers web seminars and private consultations. She is also the creator of the popular Daily Ohm course, um, and Awakening Your Feminine Chakras, and writes, uh, long-standing blog called Mummy Mystic. I love it. <laughs> so Lisa, <laughs> welcome to The Truth is Funny. Thank you, Colette. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's, it's just awesome. I, I, I was laugh We were both just laughing. We, you know, met before, right, just before the show here. And we noticed, I, I was explaining to you that I'm, I'm uh, working on a painting synchronicity right now. And, um, synchronistically here we are wearing almost the exact same dress <laughs> i know we have the same color on i almost never wore a necklace we're both wearing a necklace <laughs> i barely wear my hair down we're both wearing our hair down so yes and maybe my cat may may make an appearance too so we'll okay stella <laughs> well stella's <laughs> decided she's leaving now she just okay. had to make sure that okay. she that she <laughs> let everybody know that she's the one who's really hosting the show. <laughs> well, we have a lot of synchronicity anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. so Lisa, first and foremost, congratulations. Um, you just launched a book. You got to tell us about that first and foremost. Chakra Empowerment for Women, as you said, and it's really designed, it's structured around 12 tools. It's meant to be a very practical, how do I bring chakra energies into my daily life when I need them kind of book, as opposed to chakra meditation. It's more, how do you access the energies you need when you need them? But I've woven in the two areas that I'm the most passionate about, which is women's energetics, like how our subtle body changes with our cycle, menstruation and pregnancy and perimenopause and menopause, all those physical changes we go to also have an energetic cycle to them. And then I've woven in sexual trauma healing and how to work with the chakras for sexual trauma healing, because that is very important to me and a big part of my practice. This is, this is awesome. Like, so we already, as I said, have callers, which we'll take after the first break, okay. but I, I really want to, you know, tap into your, your energy here <laughs> and, and, and have you explain, because a lot of people talk about chakras, mm -hmm. but I just want to like a quick explanation of how you would describe chakras. Um, um, a lot of our audience is familiar with them. Yeah. But I would really like to have your take on what chakras are. Yeah. Well, the whole energy body, my take on the whole energy body is it's this interface between the physical body, the subtle body, that is the energy body is an interface between the physical body, mind and spirit. 
right? So when you enter, it's like we have these levels. So when you're working at the energy body level, you can work, you can use that as an access point, both into impacting the physical for physical healing and uh, impacting uh, and releasing emotional obstructions, mental limitations, karmic patterns. You can go either direction with it. And as we know, a lot of physical illnesses, a lot of emotional issues reverberate through all the levels, right? So you can work them at all the levels. And so that's why I like energy work because I feel like it's right in the middle where you can go both directions with it. Mm, and the mm -hmm. chakras to me are, um, they're energy centers. And there's actually a lot of different mappings. In this book, I'm working with the seven chakra mapping that most people see when they see a chart of the chakras. But I work with the lower chakras very differently because those are really where people generally need to work for sexual trauma healing. And I find many women really need to work in the lower chakras a lot as well. That's so um, interesting because uh, a lot of times uh, I'm in my deck, mm -hmm. um, Tales from the Vector, I have the seven chakra cards, mm -hmm. but I started at the base chakra and a lot of people say, well, you should go from the crown down. And I say, no, <laughs> we're human beings mm -hmm. and we're in 3D planet earth. Mm -hmm. And um, most, as, as you said, I have um, attitude is the base chakra and she's a red dragon. And then I have the orange dragon manifester, which yeah. is the sacral. And then um, I have courage which is the solar plexus. Now, most of my dragon paintings take about six months on average to do. Wow. And, and because I, like I do all my, put all my energetic work into them. Mm -hmm. But that uh, courage dragon, she took, she's yellow mm -hmm. and she took three years. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's something I really, you know, I find that, it, that for a lot of people, it's the lower chakras that need work first. And so okay. just tell us a little bit about that. Like, yeah. Well, and I think also like both you and I are attracting a lot of people that are very spiritually oriented. So often what happens is they're very energetically oriented. They're in fact really well developed in the upper chakras. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> you have to know in third eye and heart, perhaps less developed in the lower chakras. And I think especially what that impacts, that impacts manifesting, that impacts embodiment, that can impact um, sexuality, it impacts a lot of different things, physical health, you know, that root chakra is so important. And it's really, if you don't have that root chakra really linked into your physical body, you can in fact do a lot of visualization work and affirmation work and even energy healing work that's very up here and it doesn't actually take at the bodily level because that ah. between the subtle body and the physical body is not there so and, and and part of the reason i'm so focused on the lower chakras is because i work with a lot of sexual trauma survivors and that those that low those lower chakras are what tend to be the most impacted and really this is true of all trauma in a way Mm -hmm. it, it, like i was just going it, it's true of almost everything is that first and foremost we have to be able to ground ourselves onto this earth. And so I, I have uh, my teacher's certificate in psychosomatic therapy. And that is like the study of what happens to the body due to the emotions, et cetera. And for a lot of people, I mean, if they're, if people are caught in financial concern or, um, you know, like um, traumas like that, you know, just there's all sorts of traumas, um, yes. not just sexual that I find that if that the base chakra quite often will be weak yeah, and the pelvic floor will be weak. And then that affects the jaw and the jaw affects the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, as you said, and then all the energetic bodies around it. So there's a lot going on. We're very complicated. Have you noticed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like if you, if the foundation of your house is not strong, that impacts mm -hmm. the whole house sitting on top of it. And that's, that's exactly what I say. <laughs> it's pretty synchronicity. Yeah. And I think with trauma, I really, re that, that disconnection from the lower chakras, I really relate it to disassociation, what, they, what therapists mm -hmm. call disassociation, right? Mm -hmm. At the mental level, and it, like in, in the psychological community, we talk about disassociation as being strategies we have. We, we kind of disappear in our mind to survive something difficult. Mm -hmm. at the chakra level what it often means is we sort of disconnect from our lower chakras and just stay in the heart upward and they're not anchored with that strong foundation and it's a kind of like energetic disassociation 
I uh, totally so, love this. I just yeah. love this. What yeah. I've been noticing with a lot of clients, et cetera, when I, I do private consultations um, and, and a lot of people that have been sexually traumatized mm -hmm. have this thing where they disassociate and it's really obvious when they're doing it because they'll be talking about themselves and then all of a sudden they'll go into third person mm -hmm. and you can just feel them jump out of their body when they do it. <laughs> yeah. um, this is, what, we, we have to take a short break right now, but what we're going to, what we'll do is when we come back and I mean, this is fascinating. I love talking about this with you. Right. And then we do have a couple callers who are patiently waiting here. So we'll, we'll take the, these two callers that have called in so far here um, as we talk about this. And uh, this is Colette Marie Stepp, and you're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. And we'll be right back, 1-800-930-2819. We love to hear from you. Feel free to call in. Um, we'll, we'll be right back to make some shift happen. You're watching TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, this is Colette Marie Steph, and you're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. And we have um, Stella here, who's the co-host, <laughs> just trying to keep her quiet here. She's very excited because we have this most beautiful, energetic guest on the show today, Lisa Erickson. And she is like, can feel the energy. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a genie there. Like, no, oh, isn't she? yeah. <laughs> she's like, look at that. that uh, that's not downward dog. <laughs> I don't know what we call that. <laughs> she's a funny little thing. So um, we do have callers that have been patiently waiting. We're talking about chakras and chakra empowerment. And we were just talking about the lower chakras and that. So if you would like to call in 1-800-930-2819, feel free to call in. And Zach, we'll, we'll take our first caller here. If you have a question or you want some energy work, we have a powerful energy worker that um, we synchronized our clothing and everything. <laughs> we have Diana from Kelowna. You are live on The Truth is Fun. Good morning. Hi, Diana. Diana. Thank you for taking my call. Okay. Oh, um, you're very yeah, welcome. You helped me um, not too long ago with uh, just exactly what you're talking about this morning. Which, so it's very interesting because um, I had problems with my, my leg and my hip and what have you. And that's has I love that. Did I hear uh, you say that in past tense? <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. So what happened like, after yes, you phoned in? What happened? Pardon me. What happened? Is how's your leg? Um, it's it's much better, much better. Um, don't have that constant pain all the time now. So I want wow. to. Wow, Lisa, I'm that. just going to explain to Lisa. Um, uh, Diane has been. She she. I think we first met at uh, on your birthday at the Holistic Market and Fair, and uh, That's right. um, she yeah, and you had a three card consultation with me. And you were yeah. um, in a lot of pain in your leg for three years because of um, having a bad accident, slipping and falling and breaking your leg. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I told you, you know, um, and this is what, um, what Lisa and I have been talking about is that um, rarely is physical pain really just physical. And, and it, you, you can ask energetically, is it non-physical or is it physical? And for you, it came up more relationship. And so then, uh, you called into the radio show, I think, a couple times, but now the pain is like um, the pain was at over ten. What is where's your leg at now? Oh, I would say it's um, like most of the time during the day, it's maybe at a two. Yeah, that's what I was getting. So this is awesome. Um, you know what? What can we? What can Lisa and I do for you today? Okay, I was calling about something a little bit different. Um, I've booked a flight, of course, to go to Palm Springs, and it was canceled this morning due to weather, I guess, in Calgary, so um, <laughs> I'll be going out tomorrow. I just wondered if you could strengthen, um, you know, things for that vacation, that it goes well. And just one other thing, uh, my grandson dislocated his knee, and um, so he's having problems with that, and I'm just wondering if you could give some strength to that okay. as well. Okay, so... 
let, let's address this um, on baseline, the trip being canceled, where are you? 10 being I'm freaking uh, out wait. and so disappointed and zero being I'm totally neutral to this. Um, no, it's okay. It's just the times that are disappointing, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, getting to the airport to four in the morning okay, so, instead of nine. <laughs> you know, Lisa, um, you, you know, I I'm, I'm just can feel her energy moving here, like working on you. So Lisa, what, are, what would you like to say about the trip first and foremost? Yeah, I think the main well, thing I that I was it's just that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, um, Lisa was just answering the question here. So go ahead, Lisa. Uh, I think the main thing that I was feeling it was to bring calming. I do feel that I was feeling like she will be making the trip and to just stay calm. And it's going to be, uh, I know the Palm Springs area very well. I'm not that far from there. And that there's just a tremendous amount of beautiful energy there that uh, she can bring into her into her body and her being. And I, I was almost like feeling that already happening. So I feel like it's going to happen. So sunshine, exactly. <laughs> lollipops. And the desert, the desert, uh, the desert energy is really amazing, amazing energy, especially for seeing, especially for third eye, opening third eye and seeing. And that's really where my mind was going. Yeah, so I wasn't feeling any big obstacles personally. How about you? No, you know, when, it's not uncommon for us to have snowstorms like at this time of year and it to interrupt, um, you know, travel. A lot of that is because people are, a lot of people are going for like holidays right now and going for early Christmases and late. What happens is people are all putting their energy into, oh, I hope the flight isn't canceled. <laughs> and the universe just here, hears the flight is canceled. <laughs> I've had that happen yeah. a few times and Sometimes what happens is you meet the most um, amazing person on the plane when you get on the next one. Yeah. You, and other, you, I was going to yeah. say the other possibility think, that would you, Diana, would you be listening to this call if you had, were on that plane? I wonder if there's anything in this call that is important for you to hear. Some of the stuff that we were talking about related yeah. to trauma well, and lower I think, I think that's very possible because it sure does relate to some of my issues, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, how do you feel about your trip now? On just give us a number. Zero being totally um, neutral. Ten being I'm freaking out. Oh no! Oh no! It's probably a, like a a one or something. Yeah. My my main thing my main thing was what um, I'm going to be gone for three months, and I was just kind of hoping that that was going to go smoothly <laughs> yeah well you know I'm getting it's going to be an all-new adventure for you there like Lisa said so now your grandson's okay. knee his knee what um he what was he doing when he you know which first and foremost do you know he, which leg it is uh yeah it's his right leg and he was dancing when that happened and oh. it just twisted around I guess and and went out it went almost a right around or something and then he had to go to the hospital in emergency and have it put back so basically so his um, basically his his kneecap went to the back of the knee almost apparently wow and and what kind of dancing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he was dancing and, so and the, the ambulance had to come and take him to the um into the hospital and uh, they had to kind of reset it. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, you know, what's, what number are you at when you think about that happening to your grandson? 10 being, oh my gosh, and zero being, I have, it's okay, he'll be fine. Oh, I guess, I guess I'm probably at an eight. I was definitely at a 10 at the time it happened. The thought of it is like, oh, excruciating. So Lisa, in your experience here with knees turning around <laughs> it's almost like dancing with two left feet it, yeah. was this his right leg yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> Lisa what are you getting <laughs> well I'm getting really it's a message to uh I really am getting there's a message to stop in here that there's something that needs to be reassessed mm -hmm. um in his life, there's something going on that he needs to kind of stop and rework. 
mm -hmm. uh, that has to do with, you know, foundation and, and all of that. I think the injury itself will heal and at, at a normal trajectory and, and not become chronic, but that it's kind of a message in some way. So I'm, I'm sorry, if I were talking to him directly, I'd want to hear more about the circumstances. Yeah, but, like he was dancing. That's yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so and so uh, when I get uh, when I get in touch with this, it's not uncommon sometimes to pe for people to have mismatched body parts. Mm. And was this his right leg? Yeah, Diane. Yeah. So yes, he, yeah, yeah. So the right side is about moving forward and uh, in your in life. And his me while he was dancing. And usually when people are dancing, they're having fun. Um, his knee went the other way and uh, exactly what Lisa said, it's almost like he's being told to go in a new direction in something. So we're just, just, you know, strengthening all of that. And I also feel like, you know, um, this could heal very quickly. Um, once, and sometimes the universe does put you under arrest. <laughs> Have right. you ever had that happen, Lisa? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, after the birth of my first daughter, for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, there we go. And that's interesting. So thank you so much um, for calling in, Diana. Have a wonderful trip. Thank you. And, and she'll, you know, enjoy the beautiful snow we just got in Kelowna here this last night also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Colette. Thank okay. Bye. All right. Um, so... We do have another caller and uh, we only have a few minutes before the next break. So I'm gonna take this next caller and just find out from her what it is that's going on. And then we will um, come back and talk some more about this, this chakras. I'm having so much fun doing energy work with you, Lisa. Yes, me too, Colette, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Colette Marie Steph and you're listening to The Truth Is Funny on Transformation talk radio you can get in contact with me at the truth is funny.com and you can also get in touch with me at tales from the and um on social media at the truth is funny with colette i've got a be irresistible for my telespas which i'm having one the telespa is tomorrow and we will be working on posture perfect and i just wanted lisa because we have time right now for you to share your contact information with everybody Mm -hmm. and and tell them how how can they reach you and tell us how can they um, purchase your book <laughs> and all of those cool things yeah well the website for the book is chakra empowerment for women.com and you can buy it on amazon of course both us and canada amazon are carrying it and barnes and noble and indigo and all of those and Llewellyn is the publisher Llewellyn.com if you're familiar with them but if you go to chakra empowerment for women.com you'll find links to everything my blog where to buy the book a web seminar that I'm doing related to the book all of that information so and and you wanted to share just what that was um that you have as a little gift for people that uh, there was something that you were t um, that you had sent in your information. I, yeah, I just well, right now, remember. actually, I, yeah, I totally forgot about that. On Goodreads, I'm running a book giveaway. If people are familiar with Goodreads.com, sign up there, look for Chakra Empowerment for Women.com, and I'm giving away 25 signed copies. So you sign up and um, print copies. Uh, Goodreads runs it and next on the 18th, which is next Wednesday, I believe they'll do the drawing and 25 people will receive that signed copy. Cool. So um, they can go and, and how do they reach that? That's goodreads.com. All right, cool. Okay. This is Colette Marie Steffen. We're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. We'll be right back after this short break. You're watching TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, this is Colette Marie Steffen. You're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. And I forgot to mention, we're also on Facebook Live. I've got the amazing Lisa Erickson here with me. She's celebrating the um, launch of her new book. And uh, we are talking about Chakra Awakenings. We had uh, Marie uh, on the phone. We seem to have dropped your call, Marie. Um, call us from Paris. We could use some of that Par Parisian sunshine. <laughs> um, but for now, um, we'll just take the next callers out and um, see what we can uh, energetically shift here. Yes, we have Julie from Ontario. You are live on The Truth is Funny. 
Good morning, Julie. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. What, um, what can Lisa and I do for you today? Or do you have a question you would like to ask Lisa? Um, wh what would you like here today? Uh, yeah, I feel like I have a lot of second chakra stuff going on. Um, but I guess in particular, I kind of, sort of have brought it up before, but just a lot of vulnerability around um, uh, just, uh, I guess I have this kind of ongoing, off and on sort of a sense of crush on somebody and just to be able to sort of speak my truth and, you know, have it. Yeah. <laughs> Just okay. I think you I think you picked the right radio show for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just like to get a baseline for pe from people just so we can kind of track progress. So on a scale of 10 to 0, 10 being hair on fire, press the panic button. I'm really freaking out about this person and 0 being ah whatever. Um they'll be lucky if they have me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, where <laughs> where are you on okay, that scale? So I, it ranges from like right now I could be a three, but I can go off the chart. So just <laughs> I love it. Yeah, okay, I, Lisa, yeah, so. I'm I'm gonna um, hand this over to you because this you know sexual trauma. Um, we're not just talking physical trauma here. We're talking also about like the trauma of having finding someone that you want to have sex with. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so go for it, Lisa, enlighten us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm interested to hear well, from your perspective, what's holding you back? Give us just very briefly what's holding you back so we can read. Uh, it's a therapeutic relationship. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, okay. so what, what I'm really feeling like is centering in the heart and then imagining what I want, what I would love to see you do right now is imagining light coming up from your heart, through your throat and out your mouth. And it's just as if opening up this doorway to speak your truth so that a dialogue can happen around it. And I, I, and then in your second chakra, I really am feeling it more in the heart than the second chakra at the moment. I don't know. What about you, Colette? Well, I'm just getting um, the confusion that the sacral chakra is like all about because that's, you know, your sexuality, et cetera. But that's kind of more base chakra a lot of the time. And like you said, it, um, this is a, fe a fear of opening the heart. Mm -hmm. And what's coming up is a fear of being uh, vulnerable. And so, of course, if we uh, um, want to express from the heart, um, what would you suggest chakra wise here for her? Yeah, well, I do like to work with this visual and actually the second chakra can be very helpful for a woman to sort of center in imagining a beautiful light in your second chakra in your pelvis, a beautiful light in your heart. And then just imagine that light is pouring from both of them up through your neck and out your mouth and just doing that visual, uh, just doing that before you go into a conversation like this to really center in both the heart and the vulnerability of the second chakra in order to speak truth. This is a relationship that hopefully there's already some trust built around it since it's a therapeutic relationship. So that sense of um, expanding upon that trust um, and opening. Uh, I feel like it'll be a tremendous relief actually <laughs> to finally yeah. speak about it in this case. Tremendous relief. Yeah, and so uh, for uh, the heart chakra, um, my dragon for that, she's a beautiful pink and green dragon, mm -hmm. and she's flying through the air upside down, and, and her name is Unfettered, <laughs> and the little saying on her card is um, the difference between failing in love and making it in love is a matter of I. <laughs> failing and falling in love, the difference between failing and falling in love is just a matter of I. So just remembering that every relationship we have, um, especially intimate ones uh, with significant others, is a reflection of who we are coming back to us. So our number one relationship is with ourselves first and foremost. So coming from that vulnerable space 
and um, being able to really strengthen that for you. When you get in touch with your number, where are you at right now? Oof. Um, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not reading it as much. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> it's, it's owning that vulnerability and, you know, not knowing how it'll go and, yeah, and, and, but I'm responsible for my own voice and my own heart and uh, that's, however, I, whatever happens, if I just do that, that's a win for me. So. <laughs> I love it. That's what we call new neutrality. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for calling in. All right. That Thank was really you. cool. Um, I, I really appreciate when our callers call in and express themselves in this way. It takes courage to do so. Absolutely. And yeah, and ultimately, um, you know, what we're doing is energetically shifting this for everyone. Mm -hmm. that's listening now listening later i call it the higher self network um yeah. hsn where we're yeah. constantly in chat and yeah. so um lisa what else would you like to share like have you noticed that because you mentioned that um you were put under arrest after you had your first daughter mm -hmm. yeah. and and do you like would you consider like child was it a diff difficult childbirth no, really what happened is that it was like my, well, for, I have to go back to Julie because it's just on my mind. I did, I am feeling like there were so many people listening to call the call for whom that was relevant. So mm -hmm. I just wanted, I, when you said that, I just was like feeling it. And I just wanted to say also, you know, even in cases where you don't get the response you want when you open up from the heart and you speak, uh, opening up that dialogue allows you to move forward because there's really nothing worse than being stuck. Well, and, you know, you and I were talking, uh, uh, you know, when we first, because we just met this morning, be, you know, for 10 minutes, before yeah, yeah. This, this call for this show. And, you know, you were telling me how you were feeling vulnerable about doing it this way, because it's not a format that you normally had. And um, I was sharing like with, um, I'm, I'm part of a, a project called the Replenishing Life Project with Morgan B and Lucianne Chard and they're, um, that will be launching in January. But on the call, I was saying like, I was terrified to go on video <laughs> and still it gets me a little, you know, but I'm, I'm, um, as I push my limits, then I am able to, I, I just feel like so proud of myself yeah. Um, that I'm doing it, just yeah. doing it. <laughs> but every time you do that, you put yourself forward. That's what opens up the pot potential of co-creating with the universe, right? Because you're saying, yeah. okay, universe, I'm going to put myself out there now. Whatever I get back, you know, you'll incorporate that and in, you'll incorporate that in, as feedback into, uh, you know, what happens. Um, I, I just love this. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, we're, are we t due for another break, Zach? It's about that time, but you can skip it if you would like. Well, I kind of would like to skip it because I would like to um, um, get some more. Uh, um, it, I just love working with you, Lisa. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, and I can answer the question too. So whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're talking about, about sexual trauma mm -hmm. and how the chakras can empower us. But you also talk about how to manifest Mm -hmm. from um you know in every and how to use your chakras in everyday life and for some people that just is like how <laughs> yeah. so let's talk about that yeah well and let's I'll, that well i'll tie that into the question that i i kind of halted on <laughs> in terms of what happened to me after the birth of my first child i had been meditating with the chakras for many years almost 15 at that point on a path where you bring the energy up through the chakras into the crown for mystic mm -hmm. experience, which is very common. That's in chakra meditation traditions, that's typically how it's taught. And after the birth of my first child, which of course is a big second chakra opening, the second chakra is the spiritual doorway for birth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had this physical crash. I had a lot of physical health issues that I had never had before in my life. And it really was this remapping that needed to occur. And it also led me to study women's energetics and how your energy body changes. And what it really did was brought me into a new relationship with my body, really understanding embodiment in a new way. And that is really what is required for true manifesting, that link into those lower chakras. We all know people who have a lot of ideas, a lot of insight, 
that's all this upper chakra activity. But then to birth it, it has to come all the way down through you into this realm. You have to be connected in those lower chakras. So I really the, yeah. work with the downward path of the chakras as the manifesting path. The upward is the spiritual. The downward is the manifesting. I love this because um, when we're, we're when we're talking about these energy centers, it's also uh, when my mom was passing, mm. and I I worked on her chakras, and that's when I wrote the protocol for my book, and um, uh, it took me like about twelve hours to write it. And, and as I was working on it, because she was at the hospital and I was at home at the time, mm -hmm. I had just left her and I knew I saw her spirit leave her body. Oh, wow. And so I said, hey, mom, I know how much you hate hospitals. <laughs> Come home with me and let's yeah. work on your chakras. Right. And so um, and and it was like also a beautiful experience birthing, you know, birth and death are so intimately connected. And as you said, the manifest manifestation of that, the universe requires consistent steps of action towards goals in this third dimensional world. So if a person is just sitting and meditating mm -hmm. and they have all these wonderful ideas, that's cool too, because every idea we have, every thought becomes the property of the entire multiverse. Having said that to, you know, to really be able to um, harness that energy and bring it into this 3D world, that's where really, really cool shift happens. <laughs> yeah. And that's why trauma healing is so important because it so often impacts those lower chakras. It can impact manifesting in a lot of ways. It can impact someone's ability to act in this world because they're living in this more cerebral or more energetic astral level as opposed to really down, uh, you know, fully balanced through all the chakras. Yeah. yeah, this is fascinating how, um, like pulling that energy. So you were in a situation where you just had your baby mm -hmm. and you were having a lot of health issues. And what was the underlying mm -hmm. energetic reason, let's say mm -hmm. for that, that you like the leading weakness that you discovered yeah. or the root cause? There were a few different layers to it. One layer to yeah, it. Yeah, like, usually they are. <laughs> a lot of layers. So I'm like, how deep do I go into this? You know, there was some karmic stuff that uh, mm -hmm. having a child actually helped me release related to kind of persecution karmas uh, locked into the second chakra. And I would say for anyone out there that's a healer, that's a in a spiritual path, et cetera. I mean, this is most often a part of our history, whether you believe in past lives or simply ancestral wounds. We have a lot of healers and mystics that were persecuted over the years. And we have that kind of ancestral DNA. So there was a certain amount of that that was being held in my second mm -hmm. chakra that got released through having a child and then manifested physically. And I had to process that. It was also learning to manage the mother-child energy line. There mm -hmm. is an energy line that mirrors the umbilical cord. And, ex and especially if you're energetically sensitive, learning to manage that new energy line takes practice. And it takes time to understand how to manage that and to care for yourself at the same time as you're caring for your child, how to balance that energetically. Uh, so it was really this, that was the main two things that I was working with at that time. And that I find a lot of women work with postpartum. I just love this because, um, you know, I don't think of ch uh, childbirth as traumatic so much as, but as a natural, but for myself, like with my, my first daughter, I was on bed rest for five or five months. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, what I, you know, working on that now, recognizing that here I was excited and, and, and you know, that I was going to be giving birth and I've, I'm in the hospital on bed rest and being told that, you know, you got to be very careful not to move or this baby won't get enough oxygen and she'll die and you could die. And, you so know, my, you know, yeah. it was very, and when I look back on that now, I wasn't really, honestly, I wasn't that concerned at all because right. some part of I you knew it was going to be okay. Yeah. I, I knew I, I saw my baby. I saw her soul. I saw, you know. So I was like not worried about it. I was more irritated by having to lay there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But and and this is very interesting because at first I really fought it, which is how I ended up in the hospital, right? <laughs> when you're being put under arrest and you don't listen. So you know, I fought it, but then when they told me that, well, 
the baby won't get enough oxygen if you don't lay still. I was like, I was like a rock. Like I would do it for her, but I wouldn't do it for myself. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about that line between there? Like what, when, when you went through that, um, you clearly manifested a solution because here you are, yeah. <laughs> all your glory. And then I had twins, so I've survived that too. <laughs> oh so. yeah, twins too. <laughs> 19 months later, I had twins. So yeah, wow, I lived a lot wow, in a couple wow. of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom uh, was an identical twin. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I know a little bit about twins. <laughs> yeah. okay. So what, what do you feel that, um, you know, you, you know, what was, what was it that got you through that and made yeah. it possible yeah. for you to get pregnant with twins like 19 months later? Yeah. I, I really had to, I, I did a lot of healing in my lower chakras, which anchored my upper chakras. So even I felt as if I had a strong energy body overall going into it, but really there was a lot more work to do on those lower chakras. My upper chakras were very well developed, my heart and my third <laughs> eye. I was a very good seer, right? But it wasn't all fully anchored in those lower chakras. I had healing to do there. And once I did that, I think I was able to boundary myself much better because our energetic boundaries are primarily rooted in our root and our navel chakra. Mm -hmm. so that helped me to filter out the energy so I wasn't as impacted as an empath by other people's energies. And then I could manage this uh, shared energy between my children and myself much better. I just love that. I love how you explain it. Um, we do have someone um, who's just called in. I'm just checking the time here because yeah. we only have, Zach, how much time do we have? About five minutes left. Okay. okay. Well, Lisa, do you want to take uh, one more caller here? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Zach, who do we have? We have Trisha from British Columbia. You are on The Truth is Funny. Hello, Trisha. How are you today? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm quite interested in the topic of today. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to work on um, clearing my own trauma, mm -hmm. as well as um, finding out how to help my my clients. Okay, that, um, so just to give Lisa a little bit of background here, because we we're, we're we're really short of time. Radio time flies by so fast. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Trisha is actually one of my students and she's one of my dragon seers. We call her quake shift <laughs> and she transferred from the automotive industry into empowering, um, she's first nations and she's empowering, uh, foster children from first nations to, um, to keep their culture. Wonderful. And, 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 and I love this. And Trisha's also like been, she, she was, she was uh, adopted at the age of three months and there was a lot, you know, in her background. So I just wanted to fill you in on that. And, um, you know, just what you can say to Trisha about that, like just the yeah. fact that she's doing what she's doing now and she's asking for this information for yeah. her clients. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I'm real, what I instantly felt was like this earth energy coming up. Sorry, I have another phone calling. No, <laughs> earth energy flowing up. Into Talking about mothers. <laughs> oh I know. You know what it is? Would you believe it's my daughter's orthodontist calling to confirm her appointment? Okay, I've turned. <laughs> I forgot. I thought I had everything set. No, I'm feeling earth energy coming up, and what I'm really feeling is there needs to be more flow from the earth through the root, through the sacral to the navel. What I'm feeling is like a locking in the navel chakra, which I find is very common in trauma survivors. There's like this pattern of trying to um, muscle through life, like having to be a survivor and be self-sufficient and push so hard and make everything happen and making everything from the third chakra just willing through life as opposed to allowing the earth energy to come up through the root and sacral and power power the navel like allow power to come through you as opposed to just having to self-generate it so i don't know if that resonates trisha but that's that, what i'm really feeling that's beautiful that's okay. beautiful um you know we talk about this like you have to um be able to have your um handle having both feet on the ground here grounded on this earth strong to traveling at the speed that the earth is traveling at and the speed that your life is 
Thank you for calling in, Tricia. We've run out of like minutes here. <laughs> I can hear um, her heart though. I think she's going to help. I, Trisha, I feel like you're going to help a lot of kids. You have a lot of power coming through you. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's been um, doing such amazing work and um, very like really, 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 really um, so stoked that, you know, you recognize this and also. Beautiful Lisa. heart. Beautiful yeah, heart. You can feel, you can feel like um, how, because when I first met Trisha, it was some years ago, but her heart was more closed because she had been in, you know, injured a lot as a, you know, with, from her life experiences, damaged in, in some way, some ways, like we all have, you know, we're, we're, we go through different things. And now to feel this heart opening and all this beautiful energy. So, you know, we only have like two minutes left here, if that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to get so like just a, a last, um, yeah, thank you, Tricia, for calling in. And I want to get just, um, you know, last words that you would like to just let people know about, you know, what you're doing, what, or, you know, um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> My message, which I think is similar to your message, is uh, we all have more power within us than we can imagine because power is coming through us. And there's lots of ways to work with that power. The chakras are one way because at the inner source of every chakra is a doorway into just pure light. So working with the chakras is one way of clearing your obstruction so the light can come through you in the way that it's meant to do. And that's that's what I'm here to do. That's what you're here to do. And uh, chakra empowerment for for women. This is one modality for doing that. And if it resonates for you, I hope you'll look it up. <laughs> cool. And, and you know, as um, I I've said, I also have some seminars coming up in the new year. And I'm at Illuminate. Um, just to let everybody know, Illuminate is here in Kelowna. And I'm opening on Thursday night along with our wonderful keynote speaker, Elizabeth Beads. And I'm, I'll be setting an affirmation for success and three energetic upgrades that will empower people to find what they're looking for at the psychic fair. Mm -hmm. um, you can check out my seminars and also my teleconferences. I, as I said, I have one tomorrow night. Um, thank you all for uh, listening. And thank you so much, uh, Lisa, for all your beautiful energy. I had so much fun with you today. Thank you, Colette. <laughs> I did too. It was great. <laughs> and thank you, Zach, for producing the show and Dr. Pat and the rest of your team. Thank you for giving us all this opportunity to share this information. We'll be back next Wednesday, 8 o'clock a.m. Um, Pacific time with the amazing, my amazing co-host, Karen Batten. Bye for now, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, Lisa. <laughs>